All right, getting into chapter 13, uh, going back to some trig. Uh, in chapter 11, we did a basic right triangle trig, and we're now going to be applying those things to concepts like the unit circle, solving trig equations, uh, things like that. So we're starting with the unit circle. Uh, keep in mind, unit circle called the unit circle because it's a radius of one. And so if you see a right triangle like this within that circle, uh, you can apply what you know about some of the old uh, 30, 60, 90s and 45, 45, 90s um, in order to identify some of these basic trig functions that you see over here. Uh, so a couple reminders. We know that uh, let's just look at this angle right here, angle theta. Um, if we were going to do something like sine, we know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, if your hypotenuse is one, if the radius is one, then it's just the y coordinate. So if we look at this ordered pair right here, I know the y coordinate is my sine value. Just like for cosine, you would do adjacent over hypotenuse. But again, if your hypotenuse is only 1, then x over 1 is just x. And so the x coordinate um, is your cosine value. And so one thing you want to always consider whenever you're working with the unit circle is when you look at an ordered pair, your x value is your cosine value and your y value is your sine value. And we know for tangent, we always do opposite over hypo or sorry opposite over adjacent so y over x so if i do my y coordinate divided by my x coordinate i get the tangent value so working with just a few numbers down here so if we said something about the sine of 30 uh, so when we have 30 degrees remember if this were a 30 60 90 triangle then you would be throwing in the basic 30 60 90 numbers where if this is 30, then my short leg is represented by a 1. My hypotenuse is represented by a 2. And my adjacent leg is represented by a rad 3, or the long leg is rad 3. So um, that's where we get things like sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, or 1 over 2 uh, would be our sine value. And so if you were to look at the ordered pair for this, if this were a 30 degree angle, you would see that the y coordinate is 1 half. And if we did um, the cosine value, so rad 3 over 2, would be the x-coordinate, and that would be our cosine value. So one thing you got to understand, and this is going to be a big concept moving forward when we're solving trig equations, is that you can get the same value in different places on the circle. For example, if you look at this y-value, right, the y always travels up some distance from the x-axis. And so if I were to look at that over here, from the x-axis, I would travel up the exact same distance to get to this point. So this y-value would be the exact same thing as this y-value. So if I were solving for a value and I got a sine value of, let's just say, a half, well, this value would be the same as over here. Um, and so I could get more than one answer within this unit circle. So oftentimes when you're solving an equation, they'll give you some kind of a domain, like they'll say solve the equation from zero all the way to two pi, meaning find every answer you can come up with within one full circle. Or they might say from zero to pi. Um, and so they're saying give every answer you can find from zero to pi. And so oftentimes you're gonna get more than one answer. Um, just a reminder of the idea of a reference angle. So if this were 30 degrees right here, if you look at this point that you're seeing within this drawing, we could see this as a reference angle of 30 degrees, meaning if I started here, and if I go 150 degrees, so all the way to right here, 150 degrees, well, that means I have another 30 de degrees to go to get to 180, which means I have a reference angle of 30 degrees here also. So the numbers I'm getting for this ordered pair are going to be the exact same numbers I'm getting for this ordered pair because they have the same reference angle. The only difference would potentially be the signs. So if you look at this has a negative cosine value and a positive sine value, whereas this has a positive cosine value and a positive sine. So the sign, the signs would be exactly the same. The cosines would be the same numbers, but different signs. Uh, if we did something like the sine of 210, again, we're always using reference angles. So if I know this is 180, if I travel another 30 degrees to get to 210, then that right here gives me a reference angle of 30 degrees. Um, and so now I can, again, just use the idea of my 30, 60, 90 stuff uh, to come up with some values. What we're going to be doing with this is 
if this is 30 degrees, then I'm simply going to look at this right here, and I'm going to come up with the numbers for the values for a 30 degree angle, and then just change the signs depending on which quadrant I'm in. And so we're going to talk about the signs for the different quadrants down here below. Let's move on. Oh, one quick reminder I wanted to mention on this one. If you see a negative, so remember we always move counterclockwise unless it's negative, and then we move clockwise. And so if I went negative 330, I'd be going this direction, 330 degrees. That would land me right here, which is just 30 degrees shy of 360. So again, I'm going to get these numbers right here for my cosine and sine values. All right. So the acronym that you're going to remember for which quadrants have positive results is the uh, All Students Take Calculus acronym. You've probably seen that before. This is pretty common uh, that you saw in trig within math analysis. Um, the letters that you see tell you which values are positive in that quadrant. So all three trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. Only the sine values are positive in the second quadrant, which means the cosine and tangents are negative. The tangents are positive in the third quadrant, which means the other two are negative. And then the cosines are positive in the fourth quadrant, and the other two would be negative. And so that's just an easy way to remember which ones are positive and which ones are negative in which quadrant. So that way, if we're working with a reference angle somewhere, again, I'm always looking for the answer in just the first quadrant, but then I can apply the sine depending on which quadrant I'm in. And so if I were to get a cosine value, um, let's just say with this reference angle, well, I would be just getting these numbers here, um, and I would say, oh, well, my cosine is the x value, but now I can apply the sign that I know from the fourth quadrant and say, oh, well, cosines are positive in the fourth quadrant, so I'm going to assign a positive answer to my value. So a little more of the same here that I was just talking about, a little practice with some real numbers. I encourage you to pause this and give some of these a try. We do switch back and forth from degrees to radians. Really important on a test or the IB test that you pay attention to which one you're working with and, and to give your answer accordingly. Uh, so if we're in degrees, if they're giving you degrees, you need to answer in degrees. So if we said the cosine of 210, um, again, we would use that unit circle and we would go 210 degrees. We have a reference angle of 30, which means I'm simply going to look at a 30 degree value for cosine, which we know is rad 3 over 2. Because 210 is in the third quadrant, I know only tangents are positive in the third quadrant which must mean I need to give a negative answer for a cosine value in the third quadrant. And so that's the same thing as saying, okay, let's take the cosine of 30 degrees and then apply the negative to my answer. So same thing with this idea right here. If we said the sine of 3 pi over 5, so you do need to be able to work with radians as well. Uh, one thing that students often do with these is they just convert them to degrees uh, so that they make more sense and that way you don't have to memorize the unit circle because everyone's familiar with degrees. And so I, I could just convert this to degrees by multiplying it times 180 over pi and then I can do everything in degrees and then just convert back to radians at the end if that's what we need to do. Uh, but take a look at a few of these and again these are just uh, how to know which answers are going to be positive or negative and how to work with reference angles. But I know you guys have all seen plenty of that before in previous courses. Uh, so looking at something like this, uh, again, here's how now you're going to be working with a lot of these is uh, within solving equations. And so if we were to say, okay, the cosine of what value is 0.552, well, if we're solving for an angle, then we do an inverse function. So if we do the inverse cosine of 0.552, and notice this is in degrees, so my calculator should be in degrees when I'm doing this. So if we did the inverse cosine of that function, uh, we're getting this uh, 56.5 degrees. So my calculator is in degrees right now because of what I'm seeing right here for the domain of my answer. Uh, so we get this answer of 56.5 degrees. So again, here's something you really have to take into account when you're solving equations is the domain that's given. I need every answer within a full unit circle here because it says 0 to 360. So 
Keep in mind that a cosine value is an x coordinate, which means it's moving right and left. And so if I go right here to 56.5 degrees, right, that just means I went right a certain amount to get this number, which means if I go right here and go right the exact same amount, then I get another answer for the same cosine value. So always think of cosines as going left and right. And so if I look at this number right here, so since this is 360, I can do 360 minus 56.5 to get my second answer, which is 304. Right here for tangent. So I would have done this one just a little differently for tangent. I would not have used the positive. I would have done the inverse tangent of negative four, which gives you negative 76 degrees. Well, what is negative 76 degrees? If I did 360 minus 76, that's going to give me my first answer right here. Um, tangents always go across from each other. So if this is a reference angle of 76 degrees, so I did 360 minus 76 to get this answer. Well, tangents, I go across the circle diagonally to get my other answer. And so for this one, again, I need another reference angle for 76 degrees. So if I did 180 minus 76, I get my other answer right here. One more here for sine. Um, if I divide both sides by 2, then I'm now working with this function right here. So I would do the inverse sine of negative 0.2, which gives me negative 11.5 degrees. So if I did 360 minus 11.5, I get my first answer. Remember that sines are y values. They go up and down. So I got to be thinking vertically when I find my other answer. So if I went down some amount to get this answer, then on the other side of the circle, I'm going to go down the same amount to get my other answer. And so if, now if I did 180 plus 11.5, I'm going to get my second answer here. And that's what you're seeing down below. So this should be 180 plus in order to get that we get something a little differently than that. I, I would get 190, uh, 1 1.5 for my other answer. All right, last part here. This is the most common thing that you'll be doing with this on a test. So really important that you try these problems. Notice they're going to give you a domain right off the bat. I'm seeing this is in radians. So I got to make sure I'm working with radians for this problem and answer in radians. So from zero to two pi is within one full circle. So if I'm solving this equation, uh, this one I would solve by factoring. So I factor out a cosine of x to create this scenario here. Do not divide your cosine x over to the other side and say, oh, well, it's zero divided by anything is zero, so it goes away. You can never get rid of your x's or you'd be missing answers. So instead, if we solve by factoring, I set this factor equal to zero, this factor equal to zero, and we're going to get our answers that way, the same way I was just doing up above. So where I would say, well, where are my cosine values equal to zero? And that would be up at 90 degrees, which we're going to see as pi over two. Um, or um, I can go, my cosine values are also zero. So if you look on your unit circle, your cosine uh, values are zero when you go straight up to pi over two. And so that would be one answer. There should be another answer here because if I go down to three pi over two, that's also a cosine value of zero. And so that should be another answer listed here. And then you solve the other equation where your cosine value is equal to negative one. Well, that's simply when you go left one. So you're at 180 degrees. And so that's also the same as pi because we're doing this in radians. And so that would be my other answer. So I should have three answers on that one. Again, on this, if I start by just subtracting the one to get four, uh, divide by nine, and then do the square root of both sides. So you can follow through here, but I got a few different answers going here. So we're saying, okay, what sine values give me a positive two over three and which ones give me a negative two over three. And so we got several different answers listed here. So take a look and go through those so you can see where they're coming from and work with the unit circle and reference angles to get those. It's really common for people on a test to not list all of the answers needed. So please go through this and see where those answers are coming from to make sure on the test that you list all possible solutions so you don't miss out on any points. One more down here at the bottom. I encourage you to pause and give this one a try. But dividing by two, uh, notice on this one, since the two is inside the function, we deal with it last. And so you first have to divide the five over and now say, okay, the cosine of what values are equal to 0.6 
and get that in your calculator. And you got to go through and consider all possible solutions for this, for where I would get cosine values or what angles would give me a 0.6. So if you list all these out, so here's one right here. Uh, you can see another one, another possible scenario that you would get right here for another case. Once you get all your answers, then you set them equal to 2x, that interior function, and divide by 2 at the very end to get your answers. And so that's, that's another case that are look common, commonly missed problems are definitely ones that look like this as well. So make sure you follow along. Notice this one only said from 0 to pi, and so that's why we're only listing the answers that you see here. The other thing to note is, remember, pi is about 3.14. So I'm only listing answers from 0 to 3.14 at the end of the problem. And so even though I had an answer right here that was bigger than 3.14, once I divided it by 2, it fell within my domain. And so you, you got to go through and come up with all the possible answers first, then set them equal to 2x. And when you divide everything by 2, then only list the answers from 0 to 3.14.